If you have depression, you probably have heard that exercise is good to relieve the symptoms of depression, and that's true. But there is a way to exercise in general and a specific way to exercise for depression. So how do you exercise specifically to relieve the symptoms of depression, as well as how do you stick to exercise so that it's more resistant? That's exactly what we're going to discuss in this video. Before we start, my name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon uh, book called The Mental Health Prescription, as well as a personal trainer specializing in exercise for people with anxiety and depression. So first, let's get to it. The exercise prescription for depression. Whenever it comes uh, to exercise prescription, there are four parameters that we need to know, and they are what's called uh, the FIT principle, F-I-T-T. Frequency, how you pass per week. Intensity, how hard. Time, duration, and type, cardio, strength, and expression. And so what are the parameters of exercise prescription for, uh, for depression? So, so uh, let's talk about the type first, cardio versus strength training. Um, what's more effective? So there was one study done where they tried, where the researchers tried to determine what's more effective, cardio or strength training. And what they did is they recruited uh, people and divided them into three different groups. Group number one did cardio, group number two did strength training, group number three did nothing. The, every, all the other variables between cardio and strength training were the same. The frequency was the same. Both exercised for three days per week. The duration was the same. Both exercised for one hour. The intensity was the same. Both exercised at 8% of their capacity. The only difference was cardio versus strength training. And at the end of the study, they saw that uh, both the cardio and the strength training group uh, uh, improved by almost an identical amount. So as far as the type is concerned, it doesn't matter. You can do either, you can do both. So that's the uh, that's the in, uh, the type side of things. What about the frequency? How many days per week? Well, there was another study done where they compared well not at all zero times per week to three times per week to five times per week, and there appears to be no difference between three and five days per week. Now you may get extra cardiovascular improvements from four, five, six days per week, but there are no further mental health or depression benefits from additional uh, frequency. So it seems like it kind of, the point of diminishing returns is about three times per week. Now what about the intensity? There are three general intensity. There is low intensity, moderate intensity, and high intensity. When it comes to cardio, high intensity is above 85, it is over 85% of the maximum heart rate. And what is the maximum heart rate? The maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. So if hypothetically speaking, you, the viewer, is 40 years old, then, uh, then your maximum heart rate would be 220 minus 40 or a higher age. And so you would exercise above 85% of 108. That is high intensity. Moderate intensity is between 65 and 85% of the maximum heart rate, and low intensity is below 65%. Same thing with strength training, oh, except the, the threshold of what's high intensity is different. For strength training, high intensity is between 70% 70, uh, 70 and 100%. And then moderate intensity is 40 to 70, and below 40 is considered low intensity. And so what is the right intensity for, uh, for depression relief? So in another study, researchers compared 80% um, strength training to 20% strength training, so high versus low intensity. And with the group that exercised um, with 80% intensity, 61% of them had a relief of their depression symptoms. In the low intensity group, only 28%. And in the group that didn't exercise at all, in the control group, 21% of them had a uh, relief of their depression. So it seems like there's not much of a difference between not exercising at all and exercising with 20% um, uh, in intensity. But high intensity appears to be superior for depression. So we've talked about the type, we've talked about the intensity, we've talked about the frequency and what about the duration. As far as duration is concerned, it seems like a minimum of 30 minutes is what's required to, to have improvements in depressive symptoms. So there is our exercise prescription for depression. Let's review. Frequency, three times per week minimum. Intensity, high intensity, so above uh, strength training over 70%, cardio over 85%. The duration is about 30 minutes or more, and the type, cardio or strength training, either one, uh, but they both work, so just pick whichever one you like, or you can do both. Now, what about adherence to exercise? Maybe the biggest obstacle to exercise is that you're not in the mood for exercise because you're depressed. And so how do you get yourself to exercise if you're in that position? Well, here are four different strategies. Strategy number one is to do less than you think that you can. So if you think that you can exercise for one hour, do less. Start with half an hour. If you think all you can do is half an hour, do less than that, do 10 minutes. You should pick an amount that seems so low, so insignificant, that it's a no-brainer that of course you can do it. That is one strategy. Another one is to track your progress. When you, when you exercise, if you're just working out, that's different than training. 
Working out means you're just moving your body. Whereas strength means you're, you're directly aiming to improve in something, whether that's your endurance, your strength, etc. And when you're tracking progress, you're expecting progress. You're expecting to get stronger, you're expecting to get more endurance, etc. And so when you actually get those expectations, you have a direct relationship between effort and results. You put up effort, you get more results. You get stronger, you build endurance, you build flexibility, etc. Now, if you're not tracking, you don't know if what you're doing is working. That is tip number two. Tip number three is to get an accountability partner. That is somebody you report back to about whether did you exercise that day, what did you do, etc. It just needs to be a quick one or two minute conversation, even a text message, just say, yes, I did it, or no, I didn't do it. Why? Because if you're on your own and you let yourself off the hook, well, nobody else will know. There's no consequences. But if you are if you're, if you have to report to somebody else, well, then there's the embarrassment of telling them, yeah, I didn't, I didn't follow my plan. An accountability partner could be a lot of anybody. It could be your, uh, your sibling, your friend, your parent, a teacher, colleague, a coworker, somebody else. And then the last tip is to hire a personal trainer. Granted, I'm very biased here because I am a personal trainer for people with depression, and my team also does that. Um, but a personal trainer is also like an accountability partner, but to the next level. Whereas an accountability partner can give you, well, just accountability, not necessarily advice on fitness and nutrition, certainly not for depression. A personal trainer who specializes in fitness for people with depression can give you, A, the accountability, of course, but they can also give you specific fitness and nutrition advice for depression. I hope you liked this video. My name is Igor. If you like this video, click like and subscribe.